Whistler faces tremendous growth pressures as a world-class destination hosting more than 2.5 million visitors per year. The demand increases with the Olympics coming to town in 2010. One of the many issues that the municipality must deal with as it prepares for the future involves energy, particularly the energy used to heat homes, businesses, and other buildings and tourist accommodations for up to 60,000 people. I've been involved with energy in Whistler for a long, long time. So I was involved with the expansion of, of the propane system from a, a small system to a much larger system while Whistler was growing in, in leaps and bounds. So as far back as 1996, we started looking at um, bringing a, a high-pressure natural gas pipeline to Whistler. The original pipeline proposal was a... Um, a six inch diameter, 885 pound pressure pipeline and um, it would have a ultimate capacity of approximately 20,000 gigajoules a day and a, a capital cost uh, going along with that of about 45 million. The length of the pipeline is um, approximately 49 kilometers it starts in Squamish through to uh, Function Junction in, in Whistler, where um, it ties into uh, the existing distribution grid. The preparation of Whistler 2020 benefited from a highly participatory public process. Due to its commitment to this process underway as the terracing natural gas proposal was being considered, the municipality was able to assess the incoming proposal on the basis of a fully articulated sustainable energy strategy with broad support in the community. The result was that Terrison was asked to re-offer their proposal, now based on partnering with Whistler, for a long-term sustainable energy future. Full credit to Terrison because we were the ones that did ask for the pipeline and had been asking for it for many years and then it was us that made the reversal in direction and said you know we want to rethink this. It was just at that almost the 11th hour that the municipality realized well it doesn't make sense to build a big pipeline that um, will be you know take 50 years to pay off and providing fossil fuels when we're actually wanting to move off of fossil fuels. So we really uh, put a stop to the planning process and, and questioned what, what we were looking at. And so we approached Harrison and we said to them uh, in, in a meeting that I'll, I'll never forget, you know, we, we said, what are you doing to position your company into re the renewable energy business? And we said, we want you to think about that. And if you do want to pursue that and develop expertise within your, within your organization for that market, We'd like you to, um, to work with us here in Whistler. Terrison had a, a recognition and understanding that um, it is the way of the future anyway, so it presented a, a very good opportunity to really, um, you know, get under the blankets and un understand. The natural step process was really good for getting the municipality thinking in the right direction and you know, working with companies such as ourselves on how how to get stepwise to to the uh, to to the right solution. Backcasting is a technique for placing yourself at some indeterminate point of success in the future, and then asking yourself the steps that you took today and tomorrow to lead you there. Three strategic questions form the core of Whistler's backcasting approach and its assessment of the Terrison proposal. First, is it moving us in the right direction? Second, is it a flexible platform for future investment? And third, will it provide a return on investment? Throughout this process, Terrison has uh, really had an open book policy. They've invited us into their meetings. They've shown us the numbers, and we've we've worked shoulder to shoulder 
evaluating new options. They were good enough to allow us to say, this is how we like and assess, which certainly wasn't their traditional method. It was looking at the system conditions of the natural step. And we were marking off, you know, does this technical solution satisfy the system conditions? The community has definitely embraced the sustainability concepts here in Whistler with our Whistler 2020 vision and understand, more importantly, the, um, the benefits of decreasing greenhouse gas emissions. We are a ski resort, after all. We need snow. By converting from propane to natural gas, there's immediate 15% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions in Whistler. And natural gas can be used for other purposes, like for, uh, for vehicles. So we're having discussions with BC Transit right now regarding natural gas transit buses for Whistler. And there's a, a massive reduction in terms of emissions between diesel, which is some of the dirtiest fuel on the planet, and natural gas, which is actually the cleanest fossil fuel on the planet. Ministry of Transportation slowly started to develop their plans for, for the highway improvement. In and around that time, um, the, the Olympic announcement happened, and that led to a, a, a tremendous opportunity to really minimize any sort of um, environmental disruption by having the pipe installed at the same time as the road construction was going on. If you look at the, uh, the terrain leading to Whistler, it's, it's very constrained, it's very sensitive terrain. The revised pipeline scope um, was slightly, it's slightly bigger, it's 8 inch instead of 6 inch. It has a maximum operating pressure of 300 pounds, so much lower than, than the previous one. With the, the lower pressure pipeline um, un under the ministry policy, it's acceptable for it to be installed right within the, the highway shoulder. And of course, that's disturbed area, and it's also the easiest and most cost-effective place to put it. In Whistler's case, there are quite significant differences between propane and natural gas from a security perspective. Uh, the propane is delivered up by rail car, primarily rail car. Uh, the rail lines are not um, often, but they're occasionally shut down either from landslides or avalanches or, or flooding. So there are concerns in terms of the reliability of the delivery of propane to Whistler. In comparison, the natural gas pipeline provides a lot more security based on the assessments that have been done. Um, it's, it's a pipeline that gets buried in the shoulder of the highway. Um, there's bridge crossings that, that get established, and the reliability of that pipeline is uh, much better than the reliability of a, of a rail car service. What was a $43 million pipeline, high pressure, um, they came back and they said they can have a low pressure pipeline. The cost came down by about $10 million. They decreased the capacity by half. And they said, we can, we can deliver this. But that means you're, you're going to have to develop renewable energy options in Whistler. We know that there's declining fossil fuels. It's a limited resource. And it just doesn't make sense to build in a a big fossil fuel pipeline system. It doesn't provide flexibility and, and options for, for us. So our concept is to use natural gas as a backup or peaking load so that we can put in cost-effective ground source heat pump systems or alternative energy systems and use the natural gas as the peaking supply or the backup supply. We think it does allow us to make some transition steps.